Hello, I'm Kostas. Welcome to Vitilineos, a utility of the future. Utilities are at the center of the energy transition, but utilities need to transform if the energy transition is going to be a success. Kostas, thanks for having us. How does a utility today accelerate the energy transition? Well, Ross, um, the world is changing. You know, uh, energy demand is increasing. Uh, but at the same time, we need to transform the way that we generate and we distribute energy around the world. Today, uh, utilities, they are trying to, to do that. Uh, but there are difficulties, of course, mainly on the supply chain. Uh, we believe that the future is important to make faster decisions, uh, adapting new technologies, uh, selecting technologies more to the green uh, energy, uh, uh, this is the importance of the, the utilities today. Uh, if you want me to put, let's say, what I mentioned before as a, a keyword is uh, they need to take decisions. Uh, this is something that we are doing here in Mytilineos. We are taking decisions for the days to come and to transform our businesses into a utility uh, sustainable in the future. Tell us a little bit more about how Mytilineos is taking an integrated approach to your strategy going forward. Well, Mytilineos is... Uh, I would say uh, differentiates a bit from this, from the you know the normal utilities. Uh, uh, why? Because we have we are covering the full supply chain, uh, and by supply chain I mean uh, we started as a small company uh, in the energy sector of building power plants. Uh, we became a utility of uh, distributing electricity in Greece, um, uh, and the same time we started developing. Uh, power plants in Greece, but mainly around the world. So today we have a portfolio of renewables uh, around more than 13 gigawatts. And at the same time, we have uh, power plants in Greece and outside we operate and we own power plants in Greece and outside of Greece. That um, uh, helps the transformation of uh, the energy into the green side. So we cover the whole phasma of energy a supply chain, as I said, and that means that we not only cover the development, but also the construction, operation, and distribution of power. At the same time, we are also in the gas business. Uh, that means that we have covered the fuel uh, as part of the energy that we produce today, but we are looking in the future. The future means that we are decarbonizing with uh, very ambitious targets to reduce uh, uh, the CO2 uh, footprint um, as much as possible in the, in the years to come. All of these facets somehow all come together in grids. Yes. So grids are the centerpiece in many people's opinion. Tell us a more, little bit more about the importance of a future grid and a stable grid. You put it very correctly. Uh, I think this is good. the grid is a very key, uh, very uh, key factor into, into this uh, transition of, uh, in the energy sector. Uh, why? Uh, because you know you have power plants. Either these power plants is wind, solar, or uh, gas power plants, uh, and uh, everybody is investing in new power plants. But what is more important is to be able to distribute the power uh, to the end users. Uh, so grids is very important uh, since the problem that we are facing today is that we have very old grids, uh, and this is uh, a fact around the world. We see that in Europe with uh, old technologies and old grids, the system is very old. What we are doing as Metilineos is that we are involved into, uh, let's say, uh, projects uh, that has to do with new technologies, uh, like HVDC, like replacement of existing grids, like building new substations, um, for our own investments, as well as uh, TSOs, uh, Transmission System Organizations. Uh, so we have this um, luxury, let me put it that way, to provide all services from, power from development, power generation, 
and using the new grids, uh, the new technologies uh, to be able to provide uh, electricity into the, to the end users. On the grid, there are new technologies uh, under implementation. Uh, we are part of this. I would like to use the example of uh, executing projects, uh, uh, high voltage DC converter stations uh, that help uh, the energy transition uh, uh, in the means of you know, uh, interconnections uh, between countries and regions that they have different variety of energy production. And by variety, I mean, for example, on the southern part of Europe, you see more photovoltaics uh, rather than um, uh, fossil fuel power plants. Uh, and therefore, you know, a faster and more efficient transmission of electricity is a key factor for the energy transition. You mentioned new technologies. In your opinion, what are the technologies that will have the biggest impact in the energy transition? So, uh, new technologies is uh, energy storage, is uh, hydrogen and carbon capture. Uh, these are technologies that you see today uh, as a top topic, as a as the first topic of discussions uh, on the energy sector. We are using the experience that we had from our aluminium business because we till now started. Uh, as a metals company and the experience of aluminium has proven to us that there are new technologies that can be adapted in order to proceed with energy savings. Uh, that's why we're investing today as we speak uh, on such technologies uh, for not only for our own power plants as well as uh, uh, other customers. But saying that we have, uh, we are, uh, for example, in Australia, we're, in, we're developing and investing in uh, uh, hydrogen uh, uh, business uh, and this is something that we're examining also uh, to do in Greece as well as outside of Greece mainly in Europe. All utilities have a, a strategy for the future but implementing theory in real life is often difficult. What does the utility of the future look like? The, the utility of the future should be uh, able to uh, proceed uh, sooner, as soon as possible into the new investments. As I mentioned, it needs to, to, for the utility of the future to be able to be more agile, to make rapid decisions, uh, rapid projects, in order to be able to accommodate the energy demand, adapt new technologies, uh, and, uh, and be able to be more flexible uh, by using uh, other companies in, into uh, getting all the services that are needed for the, um, for the grids. Um, and this is what we are providing. I mean, uh, we, we have the, the know-how, we are able to do uh, studies, provide engineering, provide design, at the same time do the build uh, and operate uh, the grids. So this is something that we are aiming for the future uh, to be more specialized into this uh, sector and to be able to provide the services not only for ourselves and our own investments as well as to provide those services to the other TSOs and other private utilities. You mentioned projects. Yes. Are there any specific projects that make you excited that you're involved in? Well, being, being a company that started, that started doing projects in, in Greece, uh, then we, we, we started doing projects in Middle East. We uh, went to, to Africa, we went to North America, we, went, we are in Australia. Uh, we are dominating the market in Europe, I believe. Uh, uh, every project is exciting, is an exciting project uh, because every project is a different project. We are talking about projects for power generation as well as distribution and, and uh, transmission of electricity. So um, for us, yes, new uh, projects, especially on the grid side, are more exciting. is a, is a new business, uh, is a business that is we see a growth. Uh, we want to be a key player uh, on pro for projects in, in the grid on the grid sector, and um, we believe that we will succeed. What makes a good project? What what are the factors that make a project succeed? Everybody says that you know a good project is a project that is on time and on budget. For us, uh, safety matters. Uh, of course, uh, a good project is, uh, you know, to be uh, within the budget, within, within the, the time that is needed by ourselves as well as the clients, uh, our clients. But um, uh, what we believe makes uh, a successful project is at the end of the day to be able to 
continue execute this kind of, of projects with the same clients as well as getting new clients that means we have we have gained our goal which is to be able to be uh, one of the top players into the energy uh, sector uh, around the world Kostas, thank you very much for this very insightful conversation. Ross, thank you very much as well. If you'd like to meet Kostas and continue the conversation, he'll be at Inlet in Paris this year. We'll see you there.